Hello, beloved saints, brothers and sisters in Christ, more edifying of my fellowship. Uh, WTOM, thank you. He uh, listed <clears throat> a list of, you might be a Lordship Salvationist if. And uh, he gave me a bunch of these lists, but I wanted to answer a couple things. One, <laughs> A woman named Diane says, you have really changed. You've been trying so hard to push this agenda of once saved, always saved crap. Your catty remarks and bitter tone are too much to listen to. What? Change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> if you hate uh, our blessed assurance, our eternal security, the eternal everlasting life that we have, through the finished work of Christ and think something you're doing's getting you or keeping you saved? Hmm. It tells us that Christ is of none effect whosoever is justified by the law. And your performance, uh, uh, not doing a sin, is keeping a law. And that doesn't save you. For Christ is the end of the law for all those who believe. See, he said, I didn't come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And he said, not one dot or tittle would be, uh, jot or tittle would be removed until it be fulfilled. But it is fulfilled. And it tells you that through the righteousness of one, that he fulfilled it. He abolished the enmity written against us in stone, which is the law. And that the law is written on our hearts is to believe on the son and to love one another. But even when we fail at that, because our love fails, uh, he does not fail. He keeps us safe for his name's sake, because he's good. And he keeps his promises and he cannot lie. That's why it says, even when we believe not, he abides faithful, can't deny himself. Once we are born of God and we're born of God, it tells us that by with childlike faith, looking upon the cross with faith. That is what happened when Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness. It's how he explained to Nicodemus how we must be born again. The Moses lifted up the bronze serpent. The serpent represent the sin that Jesus would wear on the cross, our sin. And they looked upon it and were healed from death of the serpent bites. Just like we, we are healed from death, the second death, because Jesus wore our sin, we can wear his righteousness. Uh, people don't understand imputed righteousness. As Abraham believed God, it's counted to him for righteousness. It is. And our works are to justify us before men. They are our reasonable service uh, to live for God, to, to be a good witness so no one can speak evil of us or the church or of God. Uh, it is our spiritual maturity. It is so we can have the fullness of joy. It's for all kinds of reasons. Uh, some don't believe in Corinthians 3 where it says that if man's work abides, he can receive a reward. And if it doesn't, he shall suffer loss of the reward he could have gotten. And that day, judgment day, shall declare it. But all sins of anyone trusting Christ, their sins have been purged. Jesus by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. Now in Hebrews, those people did the willful sin of rejecting the sufficiency of the once for all sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and tried to go back to Levitical law and animal sacrifice. But there is no more sacrifice for sins because Jesus was the final and only sacrifice. All the animal sacrifices were shadows of the sacrifice, okay? So, uh, you know, just turn the channel. If you if you hate me, you hate the gospel, you hate the gospels, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to scriptures. That's the gospel he preached, the one we received, wherein we stand, the one that saved us, okay? And when it says they believed in vain, it means that some were denying the bodily resurrection. But he said you didn't believe in vain because he was seen of Cephas and of many and over 500 people at once bodily resurrected. I don't know how I've changed. I've stuck with the exact same gospel word for word I give you all the time. But if you hate God's promise that no one will snatch us out of his hands, that no matter what we do, he keeps us saved because he, he's not willing any should perish. And what does happen, and I'll answer this to Maddie. Maddie, I, I, I'm starting to wonder if you're just not on here to try to stir up fear and strife because I think you get it, but you don't want to. Um, he says, he answers to her, Thanks for showing the absurdity of the once saved, always saved doctor. Or let me tell you this. What keeps you saved then? If your righteousness was filthy rags and couldn't get you saved, why do you think it can keep you saved? And how many sins does one have to commit to lose the salvation? And again, how does one get unborn? See, my son is my son and born into my bloodline, regardless of his behavior. When he's disobedient, I'm, I'm not pleased. When he's when he's obedient, I'm pleased. And I like to bless him and give him things. 
It's the same thing with God. You don't stop being his child because you're disobedient, but you can be chastised. And it tells you here that some were infirm. Now you're seeing the exact same thing I am, except you're making it about salvation. And I'm showing you it's temporal judgment, earthly consequence that happens on a saved person that sins. Now, before I get to the list that uh, WTOM sent us, it's wonderful. I think it's from X Preacher Man. He was, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but he was a wonderful, true gospel preacher. All right, he says, now let's demonstrate this. I have never believed in one saved, always saved. So in my way to the pit of hell, I'm my way to the pit of hell. Uh, but on the other hand, you have once believed in the true gospel, once saved, always saved. Though you don't believe once saved, always saved anymore, you go to heaven. This kind of doctrine is like opening the can of worms. If a belief now it says you can fall into error, but God knows who's His. If you've ever trusted Christ, you're saved, sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise till the day of redemption. See, He's already redeemed our spirit. Then He's going to redeem our body because those that have died already, those that are asleep, they come back with the Lord and they are changed first. Their bodies are redeemed from corruption to incorruption. And those who are alive and remain, we get our glorified bodies. It's just a promise. You can't earn that promise. Do you see? It's something that comes with salvation. It's the fullness of our redemption. Our bodies just being redeemed. You don't earn that. That that's part of being saved. All right. Um, and he says, uh, he said it is so a person can just become an atheist and still stay saved. You know what? I've seen people that had a false gospel. Uh, you got to turn from your wicked ways. You got to change your life. I gave my life to Jesus. I did all these things. False gospels fall away and completely become atheists. I have never seen a born again believer full of the Holy Spirit that knows eternal life. It's a free gift. Received it gladly and then says, nope, I just don't believe it anymore. Because see, the Holy Spirit keeps you. So when you've put your trust in him, he keeps you. You can fall into error. We're warned against that to put on the full armor of God, to um, to have the assurance of salvation, that helmet of salvation on us, because we can know we have eternal life. Uh, and he goes on to tell you all these verses that I gave you in this uh, how, why we live godly. Uh, and he says, is there many ways to everlasting life or is the holiness path the only one? OK, if you think your holiness is getting you saved, you need to get saved. Because we're sanctified, declared holy by his blood. Okay? We can grow in his grace and live a more godly, holy life according to the world. But And it says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. But that's about people seeing the Lord in you. It's not about you earning it through your holiness. It's self-righteous. You could say, I'm saved because I lived so holy. Garbage. All right, and, and he says, but now being made free from sin, you become servants to God. You have your fruit unto holiness to the end, everlasting life. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Again, that is men seeing the Lord in you. All right. Plus the holiness we have is a gift of God's holiness imputed on us. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you yield your members to servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Of course, these are instructions we should all do. But what are the consequences here? They were sick and some had even died, but they didn't lose their salvation. You see, you're making their behavior about salvation and it's not. It's about temporal earthly consequences versus blessing. It's when God lifts his hands of protection off because you've opened the door for Satan to destroy your life. Okay, that's the difference. You're making it about salvation. And I'm telling you the context that we're told to do these things. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What should you do? Pick up your cross and follow him and be a disciple to live godly lives, to be a living sacrifice, holy and blameless before God. But that is not saving you. Okay, you've got to mix it up. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but into holiness, of course. For this is the will of God. Why should we do it? Because it's the will of God. That you should abstain from fornication. It's the will of God. It's not you doing it to get saved. It's because we love God. We realize we didn't do anything to save ourselves. It really is a free gift, and he loves us that much. And until you get that, you're going to have this God that's a love me or die and that's not it at all he loves you he died for you his it, it's completely perfect finished redemptive work and you trust in it that's believing the gospel that's obeying the truth to believe the report of god's son is that he gave us eternal life and that life is in his son and by the way eternal is eternal 
It's everlasting. I'm sick of explaining it. Look, when it has passed from death to life, is passed. That means I have it now. And Jesus is the life. And I have him. And he can never leave me or forsake me. So how can I lose it? I didn't earn it. How can I lose it by unearning it? It makes no sense. People want to glory in their flesh. All right, here is the list. You might be a lordship salvationist if. By the way, let me remind you that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, don't make him anything. A born-again believer can live with God ruling over all areas of their life to the best of their ability, or they won't. But that has nothing to do with salvation. That has to do with spiritual maturity and growing in God's grace. One, you think that loving Jesus is the same thing as believing in Jesus. Okay? When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your soul in his hands and said, your death, your burial, your resurrection is what I trust in to save me alone. That is salvation. Two, you believe any of the five points of Calvinism. <sighs> Three, you believe that there are marks of true believers. <sighs> Might be proving, you, you know, when it says that are wolves in sheep's clothing, they're going to look like sheep. You can't go by that. When it says the false prophets, you'll know them by their fruits. It's their words, their doctrine. Okay? Anybody can look good and righteous. For as Satan himself comes as an angel of light and as ministers, as ministers of righteousness. What did you think they'd look like? Did you think they'd be going around whoring, gambling? No. They're going to live godly lives and then preach another accursed gospel that can't save you. All right. <clears throat> Four. You think that an inventory of personal holiness is a litmus test for a believer. Nonsense. It's a test for how spiritually mature you are or how serious you, you're living your faith. But we all fall into error. We all backslide at some point. And God brings us back. We know that. With open arms and kisses our face and puts a ring on our neck and has a feast. Five, your favorite authors are John MacArthur, Paul Washer, Francis Chan, or John Piper. By the way, none of these people really know they're saved yet. See, we can know we have eternal life. I tell you these things, you may believe in the name of the Son of God, so you may know you have eternal life. They don't. They got to persevere to the end because they don't know what endure to the end means. That's about surviving physically during the tribulation. It has nothing to do with enduring and good works and faithfulness. It's just nonsense. That's what happens when you make doctrine through man's understanding instead of the Holy Spirit preaching you and teaching you all truth. Uh, I've heard John Piper say, oh, I argued with my wife. And I started to wonder, am I really one of the elect? You always hear uh, a Calvinist tell you, oh, it's just God's random foreknowledge and free will. He to any, meeny, miny, mo people. But they all believe there's something special in them that makes God choose them. No, you know how you're one of the elect? If you're trusting Christ and his finished work to save you, then you're one of the elect. That's it. You look to God, his promises, his word, not yourself, not your behavior. Now, you're, the whole thing with examine yourselves if you be in the faith, that was Paul defending his apostleship. He's saying, you're going to question me as apostle? Well, examine yourselves. Prove your own selves. Because if you're in the faith, then I'm an apostle. Because I'm the one that brought it to you. Do you see that? It's not about examine that you're really saved. It's garbage. Okay, we have to read these things in context. Number six, you believe that repenting of or turning from sin is an essential component of being or staying saved. Garbage. Repenting of a sin is keeping God's law. Repent of your sin is nowhere in the King James Bible. Repent is simply a change of mind. God repents over 30 times in Scripture. The New Bibles take out every time God repents to confuse you. They put do penance, change your hearts and lives. Nonsense. Repentance towards God and a faith towards Christ. Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works of the law and a faith towards Christ. God grants true repentance, the acknowledging of the truth, that you're a filthy sinner, your righteousness is filthy rags, your only way to heaven to the Father is through the shed blood of Christ alone. When Paul says he commands all men to repent because he winked at their ignorance. Of what? Idolatry. Turn from trusting in these things and trust on the living God the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, it's a faith thing. You're turning to faith in Christ, people. It has nothing to do with your behavior. Why? Because if you offend in one point of the law, you offend in all. And if you add your works, and yes, it's a work. Now, once we're saved, the Holy Spirit should guide us. We should listen to him to do what's right. But it's all these rules to follow. 
is to do what's reasonable and of sound mind out of kindness and of love because the heart of the law is mercy and love people if you love someone you're not going to go steal their wife and their stuff okay if you love god you're not going to worship idols it's that simple you just dwell in God's love, knowing he saved you. You are eternally secure. You're his child now, and you will always be his child. Stop putting your conditional flawed love. It's almost like you're saying only those that deserve grace get it. Well, you miss what grace is. It's undeserved. He says he justifies us for him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. So when we trust God's promise of his son that he gives us eternal life and the life is in his son it's counted to us for righteousness what is confusing about that he justifies the ungodly there's none righteous no not one you, your best uh, righteousness is filthy rags it's fig leaves that Adam wore it's the fruit of the uh, uh, tilling the fruits and vegetables that mess that Cain brought it's Hagar the law versus Sarah grace it's all over the Old Testament all right Jesus is our Sabbath we rest in him that is why the man picking up sticks on the Sabbath in the Old Testament was killed you don't mess with a shadow of the rest we have in Christ we who have believed have entered into rest why because we know we're saved the sacrifice is done the blood is washed us clean we are justified of all things justified freely by his grace where sin abounds grace did much more abound shall we send more so grace abounds god forbid no you don't do it more just because you can it's just silly all right and uh yeah i know you don't like me but you need to be of turning the channel by now anyway all right let's see uh seven you believe that good works are an automatic result of salvation. They are not. They are a cooperative effort between the prompting of the Holy Spirit and you growing in God's grace through the milk of the word and in fellowship. That's why we should be in fellowship with each other so we can be accountable to each other. Number eight, you believe behavioral changes, the I used to's, are appropriate content for a conversion testimony. You know what? I'm sick of hearing people say, I was saved because I gave my life to Jesus. No, you weren't. You were saved because he laid his life down for you. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he first loved us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And once we received him, we're saints. You know, I, I wish you people just be believe the sin issue was dealt with 2,000 years ago on the cross. From the foundation of the world, that issue was dealt with. Okay, looking forward to or backward to the cross is how we're all saved. Period. So I, I don't, you know, everybody's looking to themselves and how righteous they are. Well, what if you don't do so well for a week? What if something terrible happens and your faith is shaken? Are you not saved? Stop looking to yourself. If it's not looking to the cross, it's not salvation. Paul says, I come to you. He could boast about this and that. He said, no, I come to you boasting in my weakness. I tell you guys all the time what a broken vessel I am and that I struggle, but I'm secure in salvation. I understand scripture. Holy Spirit teaches me everything in context. I'm still learning. I listen to you guys. Uh, but when it comes to salvation and the person of Jesus Christ, I can't be shaken on that. He has absolutely helped me. And it's not because I'm so great. I'm just a broken, messed up person. But because I know I'm ungodly and I rest in him alone, knowing I got nothing good to give him, he shows me the mercy and fellowship. All right. And it's not about what you do. I used to drink and then I stopped. And then I used to do that. And I turned from my wicked ways and I turned my life around. Well, you know what AA does that? Does AA save your soul? No. That's behavior modification, not salvation, people. And if you're saved, it can be spiritual maturity. Nine, you think that people who have a pattern of big sins must not be saved. They must be unbelievers. Nonsense. Look at the whole church of Corinth. One guy was sleeping with his stepmom. Paul said, turn him over to Satan to destroy his flesh so that God may save his spirit on the day of the Lord. There's consequences on this earth for people that are saved, that continue to live in a bunch of sin. Okay? It's a built-in consequence of sin. All right. It, it is stupid. And, and everybody's got their own list of big sins. And it's usually ones they don't struggle with. You know? It, they won't, they'll be 400 pounds, but tell you, that uh, because you drink beer, you can't really be saved. But yet they, they, they eat like gluttony. And gluttony is compared to drunkenness. It's hypocrisy is what it is. 
All right, uh, 10, you give Lordship Salvation teachers a pass rather than marking and avoiding them. I don't hate these people, man. I hate every false way, and I warn you. I even prayed for Paul Washer when I asked you all to pray for him when he had his heart attack. I don't wish evil on anyone. I just want them saved, and he could have a wonderful platform for preaching the true gospel and saving people. He's a very charming man. I wish Ray Comfort would use, you know, whatever he's got for, you know, uh, uh, saving a lot of people instead of telling them that they can't keep they fail they're unsaved because they don't keep the law and then tell them you got to keep that same law that they can't keep in order to be saved instead of telling them okay here's here's why you you need christ you you failed in keeping his law you lied you stole your rotten thief sinner and now you turn to christ his death his burial his resurrection you trust in that to be saved that'd be beautiful but he doesn't he says, now you got to stop stealing and stop lying and stop having a roaming eye and stop lusting. No, Jesus upped the standard so much no person could keep it. You even have a thought of lust. Fear is a sin. I mean, this is just self-righteous nonsense. I, I want them saved and I want them saving people. They need to use it, a platform for the real gospel. Okay, here it is. You think you must desire a relationship with Christ in order to be saved. Not necessarily. We should we should these are shoulds and must people okay you think that a believer must feel more sensitivity to sin in his life or he was never really saved no the holy spirit convicts me of righteousness i'm in right standing with god through what christ did for me now when i have a thought to do something sinful i get grieved it doesn't feel good that i'm sensitive to but it's not about oh this condemnation and sin 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 i'm not sin conscious i don't worry about it i rest Remember, to those that are pure, all things are pure, but to the defiled, everything's defiled because they're constantly looking to the flesh. They don't understand the old man versus the new man. You know, the old man's the flesh. We're going to struggle against it. That's why Paul's telling us to reckon ourselves dead, that we died with Christ. This flesh was crucified. Don't feed that flesh because it leads to, to physical death. All right. You think that a believer cannot fail to distinguish himself from the lost world. Uh, yes, he can. He can fit right in unless he is growing in God's grace and living his faith. There's good ground and then there's those that are saved that get carried away with the cares of the world. It happens. Uh, you admire the exposition of lordship teachers except for the false gospel part. Well, if the gospel, the foundation's corrupt, the whole thing is a little leaven leaven at the whole lump, people. You believe faith and faithfulness are the same things. No, they are not. Faithfulness and obedience is not the same thing as faith. It's just another way of adding works to the finished work of Christ. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It is to be convinced or persuaded that something is true and put your trust in it. That's what faith is. The Bible tells you that. You are comfortable with non-biblical gospel substitutes. I'm not. The gospel I rest in is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's what saved me. Uh, your favorite bumper stickers are surrender all or not at all and heaven don't miss it for the world or uh, if Jesus isn't Lord of all he's not Lord at all Jesus is not Jesus is Lord of all now whether he's Lord of all in your life 100% of the time is nonsense because what, 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 what about that time you had a bad thought about the guy that cut you off on the freeway he wasn't your Lord in that second was he we all fail come on that's just silliness you believe the straight and narrow refers to your behavior nonsense the way is jesus christ not a process i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father but by me the way the narrow gate is jesus christ his death burial and resurrection not your performance you believe that assurance of salvation is based on your own faithfulness see your filthy rotten rags they couldn't get you saved but somehow you think they can keep you that way I'll never understand that. Jesus does all the saving and all the keeping you saved because he's faithful. It's by the obedience of one, the righteousness of one, we're saved and not you. You think Spurgeon did not teach Lordship salvation. I'd beg to differ there. You think there's a difference between head faith and heart faith and only heart faith counts. You know that the head and heart are interchangeable in scripture? That's another way to confuse it. It, it really is. You simply are trusting something. Okay, you're trusting that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus washed you clean and you're saved, eternally secure. That's it. And now you should be wanting to live for him when you get that revelation. Because that's the only way you get the Holy Spirit in you. And I wonder if these people got it. Because if they think they have to stop their sins to be saved, they haven't really 
trusted and therefore how can they be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise and if they were sealed wouldn't they, why would they have so much hatred for God's power into salvation and why would they be trying to go the way of Cain to establish their own righteousness instead of and rejecting God's righteousness instead of submitting themselves to the righteousness of God which comes by faith I, I would think the spirit would bear witness now I know we can fall into error but God knows who are his I just don't understand how they can despise and mock and spit on the Lord's work as cheap grace just makes me sick you refer to Christianity true biblical salvation as easy believism well you know what easy or hard it's believed and apparently it's not that easy for you because you just can't seem to believe it it's foolishness to you no 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 that means you can just do whatever you want the law is not for the righteous but for the wicked and when I hear people say things like, well, that just means you're going to rape and murder children, then uh, you need that law then, if that's your thought. you got bigger issues than I thought. Mine and most people I've seen that really get the revelation of God's love for them. Uh, I, uh, my friend R.L. said, you know, these preachers made him a God-hating atheist. You know, but when he got the true love of Christ and what he truly did unconditionally, now he's so excited. He's in his word. He's, he loves God. You know, it doesn't make you want to offend God more. It really doesn't. And if you get the Holy Spirit, you'll understand. He doesn't make you want to do things evil. It's just silly. You think the book of James is a diagnostic tool to determine whether someone are saved, is saved or not by their works. You know, I've done a video on the book of James. Look it up. I've done several. He's speaking to the 12 tribes of Israel scattered abroad. He is telling them to live their faith. You show me your faith by without works, and I'll show you my faith with works. It's about showing mankind our faith. It's about being justified to other people so they can see our faith, how our faith should be alive. That's all. It doesn't have anything to do with salvation. You think Matthew 21 proves that works really are required to get into heaven, therefore making God out to be a liar. Lord, Lord, didn't we preach in your name? Didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? And I will say, depart from me, you who work iniquity, I never knew you. See, there were workers of iniquity. You want to know why they were workers of iniquity? Because they brought their many wonderful works. They told Jesus, look what all I did for you, Jesus, to be saved. They didn't say, you died for me, you were buried, you rose again, and I trusted that. No, no, no. They didn't do the will of the Father as at all who see the Son believe on him. And he shall lose none, and he'll raise them up at the last day. you got to let the Bible interpret itself. Practice, the new ones put practice serve lawless to see they had a hidden sin. Doesn't sound like that to me. Sounds like they were boasting about what great Christians they are to Jesus. All right? That verse is twisted. It is clearly they brought their works to Jesus. All right? You think that free grace believers don't have access to Bibles. They're always sending me verses like, wow, I didn't know that was there. Thanks for just clearing me up in all my error. It's silly. So you quote your favorite proof text to prove to them that faith in Christ alone won't really save them. Nonsense. It's always out of context. Sometimes it's not even written to the church. All right. Uh, again, all scripture is profitable for proof, for correction, for instruction of righteousness, but it's not always written to you. All right. You believe that biblical truths can become heretical if not properly balanced. No, there's no balance. God's grace abounds and keeps on abounding. You don't limit God's grace. You don't balance it with your righteousness. It's all God's righteousness or you have none. Remember, it's if it's grace is grace, it's works, it's works. But if you add one work to that, I don't care. I don't care what it is. You are now, the rewards no longer reckoned to grace, but of debt. And you don't want that because the wages of sin is death and your good works will send you right to hell. All right. This is usually code for something along the lines that, Faith that saves is never alone. It's always accompanied by good works and or holiness. Nonsense. It's not always done anything. And anyway, our, our holiness is a big fat joke. Here's some additional marks he's, he's added. Number 27. You believe that there's some middle ground between lordship, salvation, and grace. And that the truth lies somewhere in between. No, it doesn't. Truth is truth. It is God's grace through faith alone. Period. In Christ alone, grace alone, through faith alone, in the Lord Jesus Christ, finished work alone. There is no balance of your stupid works. You get no credit. Worthy is the lamb, not worthy is the lamb in you. All right, you believe that someone must desire to turn from his sins in order to be saved. No, it is not for him that willeth or for him that runneth, but of God who showeth mercy. It's not.
you're willing to do or what you're doing. You believe that there's some missing link between grace and lordship salvation and you're bound and determined to find it. No, there isn't. You think that doctrine isn't important as long as someone loves the Lord and wants to serve him. Nonsense. There's a lot of people that have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. <clears throat> I see it all the time with these heretics. Repent or perish. Verse isn't even about eternal salvation. It's about physical death and those prideful men thinking that they were less sinners than the Galileans who died in the accident. Read it in context. You believe you are keeping God's commandments. That's a big fat joke. Nobody's ever kept them except Jesus Christ. Uh, you, you even look at a woman with lust. You even, right now, when you're hating me, Diane, you're breaking one. All right, you think being a Christian is not as good as being a Christ follower. In fact, you think they are one and the same. No, there's saved people that aren't Christian, Christ-like. There are. My pastor talks about it. Some are good ground people. Some people are just saved because God loved them and they received it. But they weren't good disciples. Okay? They remain babes in Christ. And they will stand before God and say, I was a brat. I did nothing for you. But they'll still be saved. They'll suffer loss of whatever reward they could have had. But they them, themselves shall be saved. You think that Christians are under, under any part of the Mosaic Law? Nope. No, Gentiles were never under it anyway. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for all those who believe. You were insistent that the thief on the cross would have had to do good works if he had been afforded the opportunity. Nonsense. It's a perfect example of somebody just adding to God's word. He, that day he was in paradise with Christ because of faith in who he was. You believe that someone must want to get better in order to be saved. No, they just want to realize that they're a sinner, can't save themselves, and receive the gift of salvation that comes through the redemptive finished work of Christ. Your gospel is that Christ died and was raised from the dead. In other words, you don't believe it was for our sins. See the Apostles' Creed. See, you believe he died and rose again, but you don't really think he purged all our sins. You still think there's something left to be done. And if that's the case, you got to get saved. Uh, you think that some of the people in the Bible says believed did not have saving faith. Instead, they had spurious faith or only believed some of the things about him. In other words, they were never truly saved. Garbage. You know, Judas was a disciple and walked in signs and wonders, but he never believed. He was never saved. Okay, all you have to do, what he said, if you have faith of a mustard seed, childlike faith, you trust and who Christ is and what he did. It is not complicated. Quit complicating it. I don't care how much you pontificate or use euphemisms to try to make it this kind of faith. They're that kind of faith. Faith, 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 period. is to be convinced, persuaded something's true and believe God's promise. That's it. You believe Christ was buried, rose again. He died on the cross for your sins. They were purged. Him by himself purged all your sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty. He is God in the flesh, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the great I am in Exodus. He is the man, one like unto the son of man in the book of Daniel. He is the, the one Joshua met, the angel of the Lord with the sword. He is the one with Shad, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. He is all, okay? He is the Son of the Living God, the Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, and our Savior. He did it all, people. All right. Uh, you are torn up about people's sins, but indifferent as to what gospel they might have heard and believed. Okay, that's how we know God allows heresy so we can recognize one another. If you're trusting in anything apart from the death, burial, and resurrection, you think you can lose it, you've got to get this okay now you could have been saved at some point have the holy spirit in you and fallen into error i am not saying they're all lost i believe even some catholics are saved but we have to come back to this truth this foundational truth if we want to grow we need if we want to grow in spiritual maturity and revelation we have to come back to the foundation of grace through faith in christ alone you troll grace websites agreeing with almost everything they say but trying to get them to throw you a lordship bone bottom line is people just